On a lot of work, I, I talk about consistency. Um, you know, when the idea is put out, it's still something that we have to do. I look at all the um, murders that are taking place in the city, and we, we have a program that has been 100% successful. It's called the Beef Mediation. Conflict Resolution Program of New Orleans Peacekeepers. And it's been very successful. Yes. The issue is the promotion. So we have an obligation to promote a the program that works. Mm -hmm. So all of us know somebody. We have a there was a brother that was killed on a, a few days ago. I used to coach against him in... Um, uh, football, basketball, little league, so all of and us know somebody. that brother, there was a, brother um, that was killed was a good brother. Um, I mean, for what I know, so ago, possibly whatever happened is something that probably could have been resolved uh, with, with a few words, with conversation. Yeah. So I want that us to be consistent in promoting all of the things that we're already I mean, doing. Know, so Can we do that? Praise be to Allah, so please join me as I welcome to the roster our student minister, Minister so Willie Muhammad, from Laco. In the most holy name of Allah, who appeared to us in the person of Master Farah Muhammad, we thank Almighty God Allah. We thank Almighty God Allah for his raising up the most humble and honorable Elijah Muhammad and for them both for leaving and I miss the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And I also thank Almighty God Allah for each and every one of you all. And I greet you in the greeting words of peace and paradise. Assalamu alaikum. We thank each and every one of you all for being here. We thank our guests, we thank the believers. And we just thank you. Always good to be thankful. And I heard Brother Eric quote a um, a hadith, which is a saying from Prophet Muhammad, which says that when we're thankful to other people, we're also showing our thanks and gratitude to God, right? Which is bearing witness that God works through us. So we're going to get right down to what we are here to talk about. And I pray that the message that we talk about, that you find it to be beneficial, that you can actually use it, right? I'm not interested in just standing before you just to, for applause and all of that type of stuff. That's not my motive. I really spend a lot of time just going back and forth like, is this relevant? You know, is this something that people will be able to use in their personal lives? Because we all need to be inspired because this world is tough, you know? I mean, you look at some of the headlines, sometimes you can really question whether or not, especially if you're trying to do something good, you can really question whether or not if it's if what you're doing, if it's in vain. Because sometimes it can really feel as if people are not listening, right? And nobody wants to do anything where you just feel like you're doing it and you're not having any results. When you see those people that's out there on the corner and after Hurricane Katrina, it seems like it's a large mass of Caucasian people that's begging for money now. Like, my goodness. But one thing I notice is that when you see them consistently on that corner asking for change, if they're consistently doing it, then they must be experiencing some form of success. Right? And all of us want to know that whatever we're doing that is is successful. So they must be getting enough. I don't know if they have enough to really they live in a big mansion. Whatever they may be getting is getting them enough where they can pay their bills, right? So today we want to talk about this subject title, what is our duty to ourselves? What is our duty to ourselves? And when I thought about this, you know our religious experience there's a lot of heavy emphasis placed on our duty to God and it should be because God is the source of all of our lives right and Uncle Mr. Louis Farrakhan talks about how we were born into this world in debt to Almighty God Allah so we owe God so we know that there is a duty to Almighty God Allah but what oftentimes what we don't realize that those of us who believe in God that if we're not careful we can begin to fall into a state of being imbalanced where secretly in our minds some of us feel guilty 
when the subject or the idea of being dutiful to ourselves is discussed. That sometimes we think as if to be dutiful to yourself as it means that you are going away from something that God has. You're going away from a lifestyle of serving or pleasing God. And that's not a good thing to be thinking about. So we make the mistake, brothers and sisters, where we emphasize this self-denial, right? And we minimize self-care. And one of the reasons why we do that is because there's a verse in this Bible where people often talk about it, where Jesus had told his disciples that if you want to be my follower, he said that you need to deny yourself and pick up your cross. And he said it in three different places. In Matthew chapter 16, it says, Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So people have taken that scripture and have ran with it, right? And it has been interpreted in such a way that people have literally interpreted it to mean to deny their self-care, the self-care of ourselves. But if you carefully study that scripture, you will see that that's not what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about denial, but not denying what we need to do to prepare and take care of ourselves. So and I read something where the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan talked about this scripture and it bears it witness to actually what the word that is used in the New Testament for the word deny. To deny their the minister said this. He said, if any man will be my disciple, he must first deny himself. Denying yourself is denying the things of self that he, speaking about Jesus, and the God who he represents disapproves of. Right? Denying the things that God disapproves of. He said, can you deny yourself from the fleshly lust, the appetites that keep our minds revolving on a low plane? Even though you are in the church and singing in the choir, or in the mosque preaching the word, or bowing down in prayer, or in the synagogue praising Yahweh, when the service is over, we enjoy the music and the word, but they had no power to make us desire to do better with our lives. Right? He goes further, he said, if any man will be my disciple, he must deny himself. All the prophets taught fasting. Why does God want you to deny yourself food? If you can step away from food, which is natural, and water, which is life itself, then you can step away from lying, cheating, and discipline your sexual appetites to be a non-fornicator and a non-adulterer. So God asks us to fast in order to build your discipline. What God really wants is us to deny us to deny is the evil that we do and enjoy doing, right? Why does God want the you to term that they use in the scripture for this word denial, I'm not going to even try to pronounce water, it, it's in Greek, but it means to disown or to renounce, right? And it says, it was used within the context of this scripture, carrying your cross, denying yourself conveys the sense of a person disassociating himself from self-interest for a higher power. Us to deny because all of us, we whether we want to acknowledge it or not, all of us can be tempted by our own vanity. And I found that when we try to ignore and act as if we don't have vanity can pull on us, that's when you fall victim to it. So we have to be honest about the thoughts that pop up in our mind. But if we try to ignore them, the very thing that we try to ignore as if it doesn't exist, it will find its way of taking over us. You want to acknowledge it so you can acknowledge it and grab it and squeeze the life out those evil thoughts, right? So this self-denial, brothers and sisters, is not talking about denying our personality. God has made each and every one of us unique. So, so why about the deny your uniqueness? Oh, yes. but if we try why feel bad about the way that you are as a person? It doesn't exist, and it doesn't mean that you deny yourself where now you don't want to um, have or experience, right? experience the finer things in life. So this Some people think that they're really serving God by saying they're going to go around and they won't get a car that they want. Or live in a house that you want. So why or we think that we are closer to God by saying, 
Well, blessed are the poor in spirit, so we just take on this vow of poverty. And that's not what God is talking about. God wants us to experience the best that this world has to offer because we are the best. So when you hear people talking about denial like that, you need to run. Because they're not talking about what God desires for us, right? So when we look at this, we confuse self-care with indulgence. With self-indulgence. What I mean by self-indulgence, self-indulgence is the excessive or unrestrained gratification of one one's own appetites, desires, or whims. Yes, sir. So when you hear people don't believe that you taking care of yourself is run. you just being uh, participating in self indulgence. That's different. Us, right? You're not. You don't have so this under this unrestrained appetite when you just all thinking about you, 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 and nobody else. That's when it begins to be a problem. Imagine this. What good would the disciples who followed Jesus, what good would they have been if they didn't take care of themselves? Don't believe that what you good would they have been? Imagine in this modern time if you have disciples who say that they follow Jesus and they have a car, right? And they say that they're going to use this car to go travel all over the country to spread the word of the Lord. Right. So while they're driving driving around, at some point in their their travels to spread the word of the Lord, they're going to have to pay attention to the tires. Right. They're going to have to get them rotated. They may even have to get them eventually have to buy a whole new set of tires. At some point, they're going to bring the car in to be examined to make sure its critical parts or its critical systems are functionally functioning properly. Right. Right? They look so at I'm their, they'll get their oil the change, or some people say uptime, their oil change. change. The they'll get the their oil change at some point because they know the in the order for them to be able to carry they on the mission that they said that they have taken, they taken to spread on the word of Jesus, they need this car to be able to function properly. But if they will do that for a car, then what should they be doing about the human body that holds the spirit that gave them the energy to want to go and spread God's word? They'll get their oil change. You get my point. So it makes no sense where people talk about I'm doing the will of God, but what are we doing as it relates to ourselves? Because if we're not here, then we can't do God's will. So there's something that we need to do, right? And so we have to understand, brothers and sisters, that we can't live in a world and forget that you and I are human beings. That we have physical and emotional needs. We can't minimize the need for sleep. We can't minimize the need for proper nutrition. Y'all all right? And we can't minimize the need for emotional refreshment. Somebody posted, a social worker I know, she posted an article on Facebook yesterday. And the article talked about how those people who are counselors, who are therapists, that they also need some time where they can be given some type of therapy. That they need a moment where they can be refreshed emotionally, right? We can't minimize the need for relaxation and even for recreation. Refreshment. Where we enjoy Somebody ourselves. And listen to what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that confirmed this. Well, I skipped the part. Those While I was preparing for this lecture, I realized this. That they also need that some time where they can be given. Our time self-neglect therapy. is really a sign of a lack of love for self. Emotionally, right? We can dress it up in all of this other type of stuff. We can put Islam on it, Christianity on it, Muhammad on it, Jesus on it, whoever. But this self-neglect, if we really look into it, is us saying that I am not that valuable. That I need to focus on, that I should spend some time focusing on myself. And I read what the minister said this. He said the following. Duty is the demonstration of the degree of your love, right? 
He said, the greater your sense of duty, the greater you love that, the greater love that you have, that you bind yourself to by your duty. So when we are dutiful to something, we are showing ourselves and we are showing what we love, right? He goes further and he says this, the greater I am dutiful to myself, I am proving that I love myself. Let me repeat what the minister said. He said, the greater love. I am in duty to myself, said, I am proving that I love myself. We cannot use Jesus' words to continue so the practice of not properly loving ourselves. ourselves that self-hatred and that lack of right? self-worth is so clever and so tricky says this, that we can use I God as a justification myself, for neglecting I ourselves. We can use whatever it may be. Whatever the fix may be, we can actually use that. So even us as us as Muslims, we cannot use the life of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as an excuse to continue to practice self-neglect. And there's an article, when I get opportunity, inshallah, I'll give you a copy of this. Why do you think the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan shares with us his challenges and his growth as a man? Do you think he's sharing that with us so we can continue to make the same mistakes? Or is he sharing it with us so that you and I can learn from his mistakes so we can avoid those mistakes and be better as a human being? In this article, it was in the Essence magazine, and it's titled The Price of Faith. Listen to what the minister said. When I was a young minister, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad asked me if I would commit myself to the mission, and at that time, he said, don't worry about your family, Allah will take care of them. And the minister interpreted his words of the Muslim Elijah Muhammad the same way people interpret the scripture that I just pointed out. But listen to what the minister said. I took that very literally. I have nine children and I didn't think, I don't think they have ever saw their father lying in bed. By the time they got up in the morning and started getting ready for school, I was already at the desk studying the Holy Quran or the Bible on my lessons and assignments. We went on a picnic together only once. He says further, I would give audiences to those in the mosque who needed pastoral counseling, but I think I neglected my family. But then he goes further. During the early part of my life, I don't think I didn't think too much of myself, and when you don't think too much of yourself, it's hard to think much of those who come from you. Do you see that? When we don't think much of ourselves, it doesn't just stay with us. It also is manifested in our interactions and dealings with others. He goes further. Sometimes I put on an act to make people think I was so self-confident. But for me, it was a mask to cover up my deep-seated feeling of inferiority stemming from my not having a father or a male image to look up to. He said that that is something I have had to overcome. So what about us as we sit here? Is there anything that we have experienced or any lack that we have experienced that may have us not feeling like as valuable as we are? Y'all are right. Y'all sure? He goes further. Sometimes I put on an So listen, to make people if you and I properly understand, brothers and sisters, me, what Jesus was talking about, self-denial is not so much about a behavior, but it's really about purifying our heart. Right? Purifying our heart of those forces and confronting those things such as vanity, being ego-centered ego-centered desires and what we just thinking about is all about us and we don't think about others we should think about ourselves but it should be what balance right so the minister goes further in his scriptures if you read the bible with a real understanding and not some alice in wonderland understanding you will see that the bible is filled with prophets who are human beings and these right. prophets, they were human, but they also were aware of their divinity. But despite that, these people took time to give time to themselves. Jesus took time to sit down and have food with the people, or eat food with the people he loved. 
Jesus took time when he was with the disciples, when the disciples went off to whatever, whatever business they were doing, he went to somewhere and he prayed for himself. When you study the history of Prophet Muhammad, he would break away and go into the cave and he would meditate and focus on himself to give his mind some type of comfort and relief from the world that which he was living in. And it was in that state that God but spoke to Prophet that, Muhammad and he got the Holy Quran. To give time to themselves. But he took some time, took time for to himself, to right? So if Jesus and all of these other prophets Jesus could do that, why do you and I think and assume that is that type of behavior is good for them but not good for us? And he prayed for himself. Some of us run ourselves to the ground. Just going nonstop. Nonstop for an organization, nonstop for your career, nonstop for your family, nonstop for your spouse. But when will you take some time and say, let me do something for me? And do something for you and not feel bad about doing something for you, right? Because if you don't do something for you, who else will? Because everybody else is benefiting from our service. When will we take time to do something that can help replenish our soul and our spirit? So, when we look at it, Look what Allah says in the Holy Quran. He says, do you enjoy men to good and neglect your own soul while you read the book? Have you did no sense? Like we're telling people, you need to take care of your health. Mama, you need to slow down. Daddy, you need to slow down. So-and-so, you need to slow down. Telling your children. But then we're not slowing down. So there is a contradiction, right? How can you tell somebody else to do something in which you're not doing yourself? And so then we would have to ask ourselves, how sincere is that advice to them if we're not using it? Look what Allah says in the Holy Quran. He says, do you if you look at this, and I'll say this, we are fooling ourselves if you and I think that we can give to others what we're not giving ourselves. You need to take care of your health. Mom, One time I bought this, brother Sydney showed Daddy me this little device that so you get in you case of your your, your car battery stops, right? You can self jump down. yourself, and nobody wants to be somewhere so where you ask somebody, somebody you got jumping right? cables, you got How jumping you cables. So I bought one just in case I may need it. Yourself. And, and so I gave someone a jump after the mines. They needed it, and I gave it to them, and they jumped their car. But the instructions say that after you use this yeah, device, you, this. you need to let it charge for God 24 hours. We are fooling so I let them use it, got it back, put it in my trunk, and just went about my business. Lo and behold, one day I get in my car, and it's, it's not starting up. But I'm like, yo, I got the, I got the, the equipment. Get up, put it on, it's not working. Not working. And what I realized, that the charger had... I didn't so I follow the directions and let it charge 24 hours after and using it. I gave and as I thought about that, I just thought about us. And I gave How can you charge somebody device. else if you're but not charged? That after you use this device, How can you, you make someone else feel loved if you don't love yourself? So I let them right? Use it, got it back, put it so we can't give what we really don't have. So whatever it is we want to give to people, we need to make sure we take time and we're first giving it to our what? When you get on the airplane and they always do this, they tell you in the event of emergency, the little bass will drop down from the, from the ceiling. And they tell you if you're sitting next to a lady, a baby, your father, or whoever, they tell you before you try to help them, you should put that mask on who? Because you can't help them effectively if you gasping for air. So help yourself and then you can help others, right? When you look in the Holy Quran in Surah 62 verse 9, it talks about our prayer procedure. It's Juma, and listen to what it says. Oh, you believe when the call is sounded to prayer on Friday, hasten to the remembrance of Allah, and this translation says, leave off traffic. And they tell you if you're sitting in that verse, a lady, there's a, a principle of self-care. God is telling us at some point you got to disengage from the world and you need to do because something that nurtures your own soul. You for air. And why did he use the so word traffic? Yourself, and then you you know when road rage normally right. takes place? When you Doing traffic. You ever been in traffic? Nine, Frustrated? Mad? See, 
Honking your horn, other people's honking their horn, people trying to jump in front of you. You got your, your head piece on, you throwing middle fingers to people. Lord, I forgot I had my, my garment on. Bible on the on the on the on the top of the uh, dashboard, cursing people out like a sailor. But it's doing that frustration and it's doing that anger because everybody's agitated. But a lot is telling us come away and from traffic not so much traffic. being in traffic but he's saying the no, commotion no, that exists no in this world because if you and I you are not careful and we continue to be problem man, after problem stress after, after stress agitation after agitation sooner or later this is going to snap and we will be one of those people that's under the bridge because this world has caused the mind, our mind to snap and we lost it because we have not been effective in our ability to handle stress. And a lot of this sickness that you're seeing as coming up in the environment is a result of sickness in people, is a result of their immune system being weak because all of us have bacteria and germs in us right now. But what keeps it at bay is our immune system being strong. But you know what weakens the immune system? Later, outside of what snap. we eat, outside of sugar, and we'll be stress, one of the that's under the bridge. worrying. Because this world has you begin to start getting your grown person. Now you're getting acne and you 40 or 30 some years of age. Back is starting to hurt. Chest is hurting. Legs are hurt. Knees are hurt. And we never connected. We may not connect it. We may think, oh, that's because of this. No, it's because of stress. Because all of us have bacteria and germs in us right now. Is that but right? What for real? keeps it at bay <laughs> is our immune system. God strong, never intended for you and I to just, just live this world and we live in this world not we not realizing that we have to spend some time stress, giving ourselves some self care. Worrying. So in our lessons, why would Master Farah Muhammad ask us the question, what are you doing for yourself today? Your brother from the East wants to know uh, know and hear from, from you at once. So what are you doing for yourself? In the last week, what did you do to take care of you? What did you do to take care of you physically? What did you do to take care of yourself mentally, spiritually, and emotionally? God what do we do? For you and, I and most of us, because we get so caught up in the rat race, we're running and not taking care of ourselves, and then we're wondering why we're drained, why we're frustrated, and why we feel empty. But in the end of the day, who will we be able to blame? Your brother from the east wants to know. We're going to only be able to blame ourselves. The, the responsibility so will fall on our yourself? own shoulders because some of us week, have a difficult time saying no. What did you do to take care of you physically? And if you have been helping somebody for all of this time and you say no one time and, and they get upset, then they really did didn't do? really didn't see the value and of your help anyway. We get so caught up in right? the rat race, we're running and not I hope we're getting this, right? And then we're wondering why we're drinking. So it says, what are you doing for yourself? Well, what is ourself? We're taught that ourself is a righteous Muslim. A Muslim is one who submits his or her will to do God's will. Islam is the process in which we take where we submit the process that we use or the system that we use to submit our will to do God's will, right? Saying no. But what Islam and all of that is, if we submit our will to do God's will, that means that when we talk, God is talking. When we walk, God is walking. So Islam is really the system that will really help to restore us back to being one with God. Right. And the reason why I am leading, I'm, I'm using this is because to show us the following. So it says, what are you doing for yourself? Well, what are this is why self-care is really so important. You taking care of yourself or I, me taking care of myself, it's a sacred responsibility. You, you understand what sacred means? You taking time, I, you, all of us taking time to provide self-care for ourselves is a sacred responsibility. You know why? Because when you and I take the time to provide self-care for ourselves, we are nurturing and maintaining the God force inside of us. That's what we're doing. So in the Bible, it says the following. Do you not know that you are God's temple and God's spirit dwells in you? So when we are taking time and treating ourselves as self-care, what are you really taking care of? 
God's spirit. You understand what because if this vessel, when it wears out and it goes time, back to the earth, then I it no longer holds God's spirit. So you have to see when you take time to do something for yourself, you know you're what? engaging in a sacred act. To for it's, it's even you're more, it's just as important or even God more sacred as prayer, as fasting, That's and as obeying know. God. So in the Bible it says the taking Bible, care of you, right? So imagine God's this to get, make it you. simple. Imagine if God so came to you personally and, treating ourselves and God care. gave you a you plant, care a, a, a flower. It was God's a flower in a, in a little plant container. And God up, said, I want you earth, to take care of no this. That means you spirit. know and I know in order so to take care to of that see, plant, we need to make sure it gets what? Proper sunlight. Proper water, right? Make sure that we're looking it's, at it's weeds and not growing or insects and anything that destroys the life of that. I'm quite sure that if God asked us to do that, even if you don't have a green thumb, you will make sure and learn all that you need to learn to make sure that that plan is what? Taken care. Imagine if God You will take pride in taking care of a flower that God asked you personally to take care of, right? You might it may be in a you may even build a sacred a, ni a nice little spot for it in your home. You may come home and you may talk to the plant or talk to the flower. But none of us would want to go back before God and if God said, what happened to the flower that I gave you? And we would say, I was just so busy, I didn't have time to water it, God. I didn't have time to make sure it got sun, God. I didn't have time to give it fertilizer or make sure it was in the right environment. None of us would want to do that. But do you know when we don't take care of ourselves, we're doing the same thing as almost equal to not it will be equivalent to not taking to care, care of a, a right. flower that God has you given us a, you may even build a sacred you understand that so when we look at this you may come home and you may talk it says this this is what the, the Bible also the says or do but you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you whom you have from God you are not your own for you were brought with with a price all throughout the scripture it talks about God's temple residing with our body being God's temple right so look at what duty is defined as because if God is in us then we have to ask ourselves the question what is our duty to ourselves and duty is defined as a moral or a legal obligation a responsibility a task or an action that someone is required to perform a duty is not something that we can just say I'm not going to do it today it's a, it's a required Task. It's a required action. It's duty is not just saying I'm going to do this. No, it's something that we have to do, right? So I would encourage you to go and listen to the minister's lecture on YouTube, which is titled Love and Duty. And listen to the lecture which inspired this lecture. The minister said the following. We know we have a duty to God, but you also have a duty to yourself. And he you asked the question, ask what is my duty is to, to myself? Duty is not something so that we can just God say, talks about in the Bible how each and every one of us are it's, made it's in his image and likeness. In the Holy Quran, he talks about how we're the vicegerent of Allah. And in the lecture, the minister starts explaining some basic things that you and I need to do to help provide self-care or our duty to ourselves. One of the first things that he said that we need to do, we need to be seekers of knowledge. Allah in the Holy Quran says one of the things that he hates is the deaf, dumb, and the blind, meaning the ignorant. But you also have a right? duty to yourself. So he says that and we were not question, put on this earth for us to be to ignorant. And then in the Holy Quran, he told, so before he God told the prophet to pray, before he told the prophet to fast, the first the command that God gave to the prophet was to read. And in the lecture, the he said to read and your, your Lord is generous. 
But if that is the case, brothers and sisters, how much time in the last the week have we spent reading? We need to do, we need to be how much time did we spend in the last week reading something that edifies us and something that gives us the knowledge that it will be able to address whatever problems we face in our lives? So he says that we will not put on the brain is a muscle, but it's a muscle that needs to be worked out. And the way we one of the ways that we work the muscle of this brain is by reading. The first command, you know, some of us say, Man, I don't read, reading is boring. He well, reading read is one of the primary your, your ways you and I will students. be able to get knowledge. But if that is right? the case, brothers and sisters, so if Allah, you're talking about, he is his prophet. Reading. The first command that he I'm gave to the prophet the was not to pray, that not to fast, that but to read. That will be able to so you and I have to discipline ourselves and find in our busy schedule that I'm going to take some time where I'm going to read Something. It's a muscle that needs to be worked out. Now don't say I'm gonna and take some time and I'm gonna read the horoscopes. Find something that you will read that will give you a better understanding about yourself and your value. And you can start with the word of God. Well, I'm going to read a few verses of the Holy Quran a day. A few verses of the Bible a day. Or well, I'll read a few paragraphs or something from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad or the teachings or the words of the Honorable Minister Lord Farrakhan. But start reading. And you will be amazed that when we begin to start reading, how we begin to start expanding our understanding of things outside of us, but more importantly, about us. Y'all all right? Now don't say I'm gonna take some time. Then the minister says that books. he continued. He talked about our beautiful God bodies, that right? You will read that Allah that has given to us. But if God has given us this body, you can start how much time do we spend in physical activity? Well, read a few verses Exercise. Of the Quran a day. A how few much? Of the Bible a day. Why are do you know God that they say that thirty Allah minutes Allah of cardio would do so great for the body? If you and I don't spend time physically getting this body into shape, the gravitation, the gravity on the earth will begin to start pulling on us and we'll start looking older faster. Y'all not right? You mean to say we are that busy that we can't spend 30 minutes to make sure that this body stays in shape? That Allah has given to us. But we can spend time making sure but I gotta bring my shoes to the to the shoe repair because the heels are off. The heels are, are run over. I need a new I need new heels off. I gotta put this particular garment or whatever we might wear. I gotta go bring it to the cleaners. On my car, the engine light came on. It's time for me to go to to get an oil change. And that engine light is just letting you know, like, yo, this car is time to be serviced. But what about the engine lights that in our personal lives that we ignore every day? Headaches here. Lack of just, just being tired, even though you just got out of the bed. That's the body saying, yo, I need something. But we can't keep ignoring those signs and wondering why we're feeling the way that we feel. If we can take care of all of these other things that are material, we have to ask the question, why don't I have the same energy, the same desire to take care of my own material body? And that engine light right? is letting you know, like, yo, this car is time to be serviced. But what so when we go further and we look at this, then the minister talked about how day. how we need to learn. He said how we need to begin to start taking care of our body. And uh, he goes further and he says that our duty towards ourselves determine, determines our love for ourselves. So as we sit here, I'm thinking about myself. I saw a picture. I'm like, man, I'm fat all in the face. If we can take care of all and I ain't like it. things that are material, so I looked up something on the internet like foods to avoid to lose weight. And every the food they listed on that I have been eating the last couple of weeks. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, I can't, I was like, so I can't say I wanna just lose weight and I'm still eating this stuff. He said how we need and then I realized that damn man, I gotta stop lying to myself. Because I'll tell myself, you're not going to eat it today. And guess what? I went up yesterday. One of the foods that it, it starts off saying, do not eat this if you want to lose weight. End up eating it. The set of intelligence came in. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to eat it, but I'm going to eat one meal so that should counter it. 
Right. We deal with this, and right? I'm like, yo. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to fast on tomorrow. And then when tomorrow comes, I'm going to fast on the and next I'm day. Eating this stuff. And then I but here I know I'm me eating this does not benefit me. So that's an area as a, my love for myself in that area has to be strengthened. So my discipline and what I put in my body has to be strengthened. So I have to look into myself and say, why can't you restrain yourself from eating something which you know is not beneficial? Right? So I have to look at how much do I love myself because we can't even follow something that Jesus says in the Bible if we don't really love ourselves. What Jesus said, love your, the, the second commandment, he said, after loving God, love your neighbor as you love yourself. But, here but how can we love our neighbor if we don't really love ourselves? So that's an area the minister said we can only love God and others. He said we can't love God and others more than we love ourselves. No, no, that doesn't mean we can't talk it. But we can't love God and others more than we love ourselves. So if Allah says, and it says in our prayer procedure, says, we can't even prayer is better than Jesus sleep. Says in the Bible, if we don't really this is God ourselves. saying prayer when is Jesus better than sleep. Love your, if we really believe that, that, then why are we God sleep? Love your neighbor when it's time you know for prayer. Because there's but something in our minds that's saying, we don't well, I don't necessarily God. believe that 100%. Said, we can only because the God things that we believe 100%, guess what? You find us doing them. Right? So we have to examine our own mind and see what's causing the contradiction. Sometimes it may be a misunderstanding. Sometimes it can be, as it relates to prayer, it can be a misunderstanding of how prayer works. Because if we've been taught that all you do is pray and something is going to happen, and years after praying and praying and nothing happens, guess what? We're going to stop that type of We're going to stop praying. Well, prayer doesn't mean you pray and something is going to happen. Prayer is what fuels us. Prayer is like what connects us to God and gives us the energy to go out and begin to work to make our prayers real, right? See, brothers and sisters, as I said earlier, and I'll repeat this. The process of taking care of ourselves should be seen as sacred. We have been taught in such a way where we go into these houses of worship. We've and you know, that all you, do is pray you get ready to walk out the whole left finger up. Don't bring cigarettes in the, ho in the house of prayer. Don't, you know, these praying. house of miles, whatever you want to call them. We have been made to take these buildings as sacred. And we do that all the while while we're violating the real temple of God, which is us. So when Jesus said he came to give life and life more abundantly, it does not mean that all we just have to do is believe in him and we don't have to do anything. No, we have to take care of ourselves. There is no mystery, God. And I don't care how much Quran or Bible you know, if we don't take care of this physical body, all that Quran and all that Bible going to go right in that grave with you. So we have to spend time doing so. Because there's a consequence, brothers and sisters, that we experience when we don't take care of ourselves. So look what the Bible says. If anyone destroys God's temple, you God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy and so you Jesus are that said, temple. He came to give life and life That's what God abundantly. says. And the minister goes further. He says, there is a consequence when we mistreat ourselves. We don't have to After our duty to God is a so duty to ourselves. Care ourselves. We can't they say we love Allah and don't no, love yourself Quran enough to perform you know the duty that is required of ourselves. Minister Farrakhan takes time out to engage in self-care. So we have to spend time. So don't, I don't want people to think, as I mentioned earlier, people will use the minister's life as an excuse to continue practicing so their own the form of self-hatred. Well, I don't do this because the minister said we need to go. We need to keep going. We need to give it all. And we run ourselves into the grave. And what's so dangerous about that? When we run ourselves into the grave and we realize how we self-neglected ourselves all of those years, then bitterness sets in. And now we want to blame the minister. Or now you want to blame your pastor. Or now you want to be bitter at God when we can't blame anybody because it was us who used their name, used the minister, used Jesus, used Muhammad's name to really cover our lack of love for ourselves. That's what it really...
Christ it is. Says, we just found another way that seems to be righteous and seemed to I give us some applause and, and gave us some praise to continue neglecting ourselves. Off. Right? Our praise is due to a lot. So listen, we're about to close. There are videos of the album Minister Louis Farrakhan pumping waste. We see the minister and we're like, look how good he looks. He's 80 some years old. But he took care of himself. He exercised. Of course, he 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 he, he, he uh, dwells on what's positive and dwells on what's good. But there were some physical things that the minister did. You know, mystery God. We just found another way there are moments where the minister takes for solitude and, and reflection, and right? There are moments where the minister engages in activities right. with his family because the minister realized that he said, man, I neglected my family. And when we were in Grambling, where one of the minister's relatives were was graduating, right? And so he invited us up to the suite and the minister met with us for like two hours. And I was really debating not going because I'm like, man, we always have access to the minister. The minister family needs to have time with him. But I came up not thinking that I thought maybe we'll get the opportunity just to greet him. But we ended up staying in the suite for like two hours where he was talking to him. And when he was got ready to when he finished Right. Getting ready to go yeah, to the graduation, the minister, the minister said, are you all coming to the, the dinner tonight? He had a dinner after the graduation. Nobody wanted to say, like, yo, yeah, I'm coming. We wasn't invited. But the minister said, you all can come. He said, but let me tell you this. He said, I won't have time to be talking to you all because I'm going to be spending time with my family. So I don't want anybody to make you believe the minister doesn't spend time with his family. Right? It may not be as much time as some of us have because just the nature of who he is and what he does. But nonetheless, he spends time with his family. Why shouldn't we? You can't think that you're going to have a strong marriage. You don't want to spend any time with your wife or your husband. Are you all coming to the Y'all all right? He engages in activity that helped to give him pieces of a peace of mind. His daughter said, "Oh, she sees her father playing the violin, and as she sees him playing the violin, he just looks so peaceful." And she asks herself, "I wonder where he is mentally." Because she said you can tell that he has put aside all of the different issues and problems and problems of others that he normally addresses on an everyday basis. Sometimes the minister goes to concerts. He was just at the Jay-Z and Beyonce concert. Now none of y'all can't tell me why I can't go. He gets some joy out of watching sporting events, boxing. I'm saying this to say I don't want anybody to, to if, I'm saying this because many of us love the minister So I'm holding him up So if he does it Maybe we should be able to start doing it Not should be We should do it That it's okay for you to do it Especially if you and I said We only believe that we live in This is our only life If this is our only life I want to enjoy it And I plan on enjoying it right yeah, I know you always see you on Instagram all over, bro. But we should not allow some unfortunate incident to cause you and I to slow down and begin to start assessing what's really important to us. Should, there's a story you probably heard me talk about it before where there was this young brother, he was a business exec making six figures. So he went and bought him like this. Maybe this we fly Jaguar. Not so he dropped the top do. riding around the and city like, yo, just flossing. And he was Especially driving on this I particular street and he heard this, 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 this crash. Life. Boom! And this he realized life, something hit his vehicle. It, so he right. put it into park and he and got I'm out. It was a huge, it was a rock next to his, to the, to the, to the door and it was a huge dent in his brand new Jaguar. So he got up, he was out, he got out, he was furious. And he looked and see who was around and he saw this little boy and the brick came from that direction. He ran over and he grabbed the little boy, shaking him, smacking him up. Why did you throw that, that brick and, dent my, and put a dent in my car? And the boy's crying and then when he stopped, as the boy was still crying, the boy said, sir, 
So he dropped My younger brother fell out of his wheelchair and his device that he was hooked up was to has been disconnected and I can't put it back together and I've been waving Boom. trying to tell everybody to stop. He but the cars keep theory. going past. So he, so he said, I was wondering what could I do? He said, I saw the brick and he said, I'm just going to throw it into traffic and it will hit a car and somebody will stop. So when the young exec heard that, it put some things back into perspective. He and he saw the young boy on the ground and he went over, plugged him back up, probably saved his life. And as he got ready to go, the young boy looked at him and put his hands on his face and said, thank you, you saved my life with tears in his eyes. And so as he was going back to the vehicle, he didn't even think about the debt that was in his car. He just thought about like how I was so caught up in myself that I didn't think about others. And I can't put it right, he was overindulging, indulging, right? And the moral of that story is, so does I God have, have to allow a brick to hit us in order for us to stop? To, traffic, and it will hit a car to start focusing stop. on us. People so are dying every day, it right? Some, some of us get so caught up in everything that we do that we walk outside and don't even realize, like, man, it's a beautiful day. And as he got ready don't even to go realize and about what all of we have tr challenges in our lives but more than likely if we sit down there's more good in our lives than bad but if we don't take the time to hit the pause button we don't count our blessings all we do is focus on the poor part is that right so as you leave here today listen in order for you and I to begin to start properly providing self-care to ourselves, we really have to sit down and make it be intentional about doing so. Don't just sit here as you as you sit here today and say, I'm going to do something for myself this week. No. Sit down and write down all of the stuff you have to do. Look at your schedule because we really have things that we have to do. But look at your schedule and find out don't during this week, when is some time that I can take time for myself in our lives, and jot it down, put it in your cell phone calendar and say on this time and let everybody know between four and this, I'I'm doing this. Don't call me. Don't text me. In fact, call this person or text this person and go do something for yourself. And if you feel bad about doing it, you have to look within your mind and say, why do I feel bad? Most of you all of ours that ask you, do you do a lot for everybody else? You will raise your hand. So if you do a lot for everybody else, why should you feel bad for doing something for you? No. Just some time out to say, I'm going to take a couple of minutes just to do some physical exercise. You get on YouTube now, they have where you can do a full body workout in 10 minutes. And it feel like the white girl that was on the biggest, what's up, what white girl that be working people like they just, Jillian, right? I did one of her like 20 minute workouts, I was cussing the television. I'm like, yo. Don't text me. So there are ways now where you can engage in physical activity where it doesn't take you going to a gym for three or four hours. Like you meet like Brother Richard when I'm talking about Richard. You go in the gym and you just see people just live in the gym. You don't have, if you want, if you have the time to do that, you can. But begin to start doing something. Begin to start enjoying yourself. Get some rest. Go to sleep. Because you can't think that you're going to be up at 2 o'clock in the morning and you're going to wake up for five of prayer. That ain't real. You need to go to bed. Is that right? Enjoy life. Is there anything that you want to see? People travel all over from America to come here to New Orleans to see the sights. And you and I have been living here for years and we, don't, we haven't seen any of them. Why can't you take a tour? Like, do we as believers, are we just satisfied with just reciting that the Pacific Ocean is 68,634,000 square miles? Are we just excited talking about the lakes and the rivers are 1 million square miles? Are we just excited talking about the hills and the mountains are 14 million square miles? Or the Atlantic Ocean is 41,321,000 square miles? Are we just excited talking about them? Or do you one day want to be able to say, I put my feet in the Atlantic Ocean? I took a cruise where we rolled over the Pacific Ocean. I want to go see this river. I want to go see this mountain. We should want to experience those things. You mean to tell me those places where the water are blue, only the people who are wicked should enjoy that? 
You don't have a desire to want to go to Jamaica yourself? Like, go to the Bahamas yourself? Are we just satisfied with just If Allah says that the best part is for us and you say that you follow Allah, why don't you have any desires or making any plans to go experience that? There is no mystery God. So there are a lot of things I want to go experience. I wanted to go to go to San Diego by Allah's grace. My family and I, we went. And I was able to put my feet in the Pacific Ocean. I took a cruise, so think about it and Pacific it's Ocean. all about being balanced i'm not saying you get so engo engaged in self-care now you forget the mission no i'm saying be balanced because allah says in the quran he hates extremes he doesn't want us to be all about the mission but then you neglect the very body you neglect the very life that he gave you but he also doesn't want us to be all into ourselves and we forget that we have a world that we need to work to help to reform. Right? So the album Minister Louis Farrakhan in that lecture, Love and Duty, immediately after he finished, he said, after your duty to God is your duty to yourself. And he started talking about what are those specific things that we can do to be dutiful to ourselves. So let's Hopefully a week from now, two weeks so from now, you can be able to tell me, listen, I'm being more dutiful to myself. And when I hear you say that or I see you doing that, then I know you are showing more love to yourself. So thank you and may Allah continue to bless each and every one. So you can stop my brother. So this is our acceptance portion of our program. And we thank you all who have had the opportunity to be here. So if this is your first time, second time, a third time. How many of you believe today that what you heard to be first good and true, first for your our people and first for yourself? Look at me. You see what I'm saying? Our people. First for your. Look out. Look how that is set up. Be good and true first for yourself. Then for our people, if that is so. If, if if you believe what you heard today to be good and true, first for yourself and our people. So can you raise your hand? All praises due to Allah. And with that being said, brothers and sisters, now the second question is you've already agreed that it's good for you, it's beneficial for you, it's beneficial for our people. If you are ready to accept the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and help us in this mission of bettering ourselves and then bettering the community in which we're in, all we ask is that you raise your hand. Is there anyone that's ready to do so now? If so, raise your hand. But we ask, brothers and sisters, that you continue to keep coming out. And may Allah continue to bless each and every one of you all. I salam alaikum. And I bring up our brother, Brother Lawrence. Brother Jamal, you can get that phone. And before I bring up Brother Lawrence, we have a brother who just, when is your album coming out? September 7th. He has an album coming out. And he told me, he promised me he was going to remix uh, In My Feelings by Drake. <laughs> the jazz version. But Brother Roderick is a jazz right. vocalist, right? That's right. And he sings at weddings and everything else. Right. And he can really sing. When, right. May Allah be pleased with when Brother Harold was there. Brother Harold would just call him up and he would sing Black Butterfly. <laughs> but I, I seem to can't get that same privilege, but we'll see. So may Allah continue to bless you. I saw him Lincoln. Let's give him a round of applause. Praise be to Allah. Let me know when you do that Drake remix. <laughs> in my feelings. I got to hear that in the jazz form. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. So at this time, family, this is our charity portion of our uh, meeting. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass the charity receptacles and whatever it is that you have to give today and willing to give will be greatly appreciated. And as I always say, make sure that you give not grudgingly, nor of necessity, because God does love the cheerful giver. So we never want to follow up charity with reproach. Man, did I see somebody just drop like a whole knot in there? <laughs> like I saw something with a rubber band on it, boy. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Like, we good. Yep, let the church say amen. <laughs> Praise be to Allah.